What's up, world? It's about time. Bo Roser actually now meta. And I have the perfect build guide for you in season three, which is mostly an updated version of my very first rapid fire guide I did for season one. We are now truly playing Range Rogue, and with Force for Arrow, monsters have little hope of ever reaching you. This is an all in one package of a build. You got mobility, buffs, debuffs, utility, and godlike single target damage. With the repeating aspect, you also have excellent clearing ability that's commendable for a skill focused on single target. People often underestimate Rapid Fire's ability to clear, and it's impressive enough that you'd often forget you don't have pin shot in this build. A true all rounder and a top build for certain. Oh, I didn't forget. It can one shot bosses too, solo that is, without needing to switch builds or skills. I did say it was a true all rounder, right? If you like playing range rogue, you should definitely give this a try. All right, so let's go over the gearing real quick. And this is the gear that I've used in the clip that you saw earlier. So we're going to kind of go over exactly that. Now, this is going to be a little bit different than what I have on the macro guide. Uh, this is more so of like my personal setup. So if you see some differences, I will kind of like point them out. Uh, so therefore, you know what the differences are and you can kind of choose the route that you want to go and what works best for you. Uh, we're going to start with the Sky Hunter. What you want to prioritize is, of course, the item level. So therefore, it rolls higher weapon damage. You want to prioritize then the unique ethics. And then third, the critical strike damage is the probably the last of the priorities there when you're looking for a good Sky Hunter. As you see, I got two of the three pretty decent, but the unique ethics leaves a lot to desire for. So I got some farming to do still. If you don't have a Sky Hunter, you can go with a regular bow or two hand crossbow and look for dexterity, all stats, crit damage and core skill damage as well. Um, same thing going to the combination dagger. You would like to try to get one of those. You can actually farm for the combination dagger and the sky hunter in the same spot with Varshan. So killing Varshan over and over again are great places to get these two unique items. So you should be able to get these pretty quickly. And for the combination dagger, of course, you want the high unique ethics roll. And then uh, the second thing would be the uh, critical strike damage. And then third would be the basic a skill attack speed, which I know probably sounds a little bit weird, but with bow basic attacks, they are kind of slow uh, compared to like doing puncture. So you want that attack speed to be pretty high. The thing you don't care about is the item power in terms of the damage range, because of course you're not using uh, your daggers or your swords for damage. You're using just your bow for that. So the damage doesn't really matter here. If you can't find a combination dagger, a regular sword with crit damage, dexterity, all stats and core damage, just like the Regular bow, uh, same thing. You'll do the same thing on this side too as well. Uh, all stats, dexterity, crit, critical strike damage, and of course core damage. I have damage to distance enemies. That's just because that's just what it rolled. Uh, coming to the rings here, what you really want is crit chance, lucky hit crit chance, critical strike damage, and maximum health. Those are the four stats you want. Uh, you can kind of play around with maximum health and see if you actually really need that. You can go more offensive heavy if you can you know if that works for you if you don't find yourself dying or getting hit as much both of my rings i didn't i really didn't get lucky to, to try to get those stats so i just went more offensive here uh but i would have preferred having lucky hit which i don't have on any one of these rings here going towards the amulet movement speed is king um i know not everyone likes to uh, put movement speed in the amulet but man when you're playing range getting around and uh, getting good positioning for your rapid fire is very important. So movement speed, uh, total armor, uh, frigid finesse key passive is what you really want to go here. Um, and Pettis is actually pretty good too as well because you're moving a lot. So you're going to get that burst uh, quite often. Um, and then for the fourth one, generally speaking, can be anything cooldown reduction, damage reduction, uh, whatever works for you there. Um, as you can see, I didn't didn't really get the I, I got marksman skill damage you don't really want that but that's just how it rolled we're coming to Shaco uh, self-explanatory don't need to say much about it if you can't if you don't have a Shaco a regular helm life on kill because you don't you know sustain is actually pretty good here basic skill attack speed is also very good cooldown reduction maximum life much kind of like the stats on the Harley Quinn press here just on a regular helm and you would want to pretty much either do uh frostbitten aspect or shared misery until you're able to get a 
Quinn's Quest if you actually do find one. If not, it's really not that big of a deal. Coming down to the chest, you want armor. Try to get one resistance here. Damage reduction and damage reduction versus distant enemies. Maximum life is actually not bad if you can't get all of them. Coming down to the glove, you want attack speed, crit chance, lucky hit chance, and ranks to rapid fire. Pretty standard here. Coming down to pants, armor, one resist, maximum life, and either damage reduction or uh, ranks to dark shroud. Either one of those is gonna give you pretty decent damage reduction. You will wanna kinda have one of those. Or if you don't want maximum life, you can do damage reduction and ranks to dark shroud. It's kinda up to you, but try to make sure you do get at least one resistance there. So you want one resistance in your pants, one uh, for your chest, and then for your boots, you want three resistances and then of course movement speed and something very important which is attacks reduce evades cooldown by 1.2 seconds uh you you want that that's going to be really good for rapid fire because you want to evade after rapid fire to cancel uh the, the really long animation that rapid fire has now let's talk about the aspects here the offensive aspects you want rapid expectant edge masters and this one is kind of up in the air it's gonna be more so up, up to you i like accelerating i really want more attack speed but you can do icy alchemist or you can do aspect of elements if you want in place of that on the amulet you must must have repeating repeating is what pretty much allows rapid fire to be able to clear and become a pretty massive aoe uh clearing machine uh, when you have this shadowed in view. So very important that you have as high of a role of repeating as you possibly can on the amulet. When it comes to the gems here in the sockets here, you do want emeralds in your weapons, uh, skulls here to try to maximize your armor. We'll kind of talk about that in a second. And then of course, in the armor pieces, you want rubies for maximum life. For the gear part of it, in terms of aspects, we do have Umbras. Umbras is going to give you free Dark Shrouds uh, anytime that you lucky hit crit. You're gonna get that a lot because we are critting quite a bit. So you'll have Dark Shroud up a lot and they do count towards your uh, skill points into Dark Shroud as well. So you do want to do that. Coming down to Pants, we're gonna go with Might here. Uh, this is kind of where it deviates a little bit different than the Max Roll Guide. Um, I have Juggernaut here instead. And the reason why I do that on the Max Roll Guide is because it makes it very easy to cap out your armor with Juggernaut than it is doing it the way that I'm doing it. This is more so try hard, trying to get all of my armor or enough armor without disobedience or without Juggernaut. So, but if you prefer the easier route with that, I would just look at the Max Roll Guide for this versus what I'm doing here. For this guide, I have Might here instead of Juggernaut and I'm able to get my armor pretty close to cap without the need to do so. Then on the boots, I have Manglers here. Uh, on the Max Roll Guide, I think I have I have Frostbitten. I played around with the, quite a few different ones this season and I kind of always just go back to Manglers. It's just so good. When you have Manglers with Frost, uh, sorry, with uh, Forceful Arrow, uh, just nothing touches you, man. Everything is crowd control. It's so easy to kind of get around and like not get hit and just be able to play range uh, pretty simply. So uh, I always come at the Manglers. Manglers is just so, so, so good. And of course, if you don't have a Shaco, you can put Frostbitten on your helmet anyways so like you kind of get the best of all worlds here and that's it for gearing so for skills we have another deviation from the max roll guide a little bit i prefer forceful arrow as i was talking about earlier why i like it so much so we go forceful arrow here and we take fundamental forceful arrow and this gives you the not bad uh, allowing you to stay safe keep uh, distance pretty easily and also just bully targets all the time like at will we come down, we take rapid fire, and for now we take improved rapid fire. The reason why we don't take advanced rapid fire is because unfortunately it's bugged. If you take advanced rapid fire with precision key passive, the precision key passive doesn't work at all whatsoever. Like the advanced rapid fire while active will override the precision key passive, which is the primary reason why you're playing bow rogue and it's a lot of damage. So. Make sure you do not take advanced rapid fire until this bug is fixed. It's been reported. They know that it's bugged. Hopefully in the patch or two or whatever like that, they will get it fixed and will have 30% more damage. Choose improve rapid fire until you see otherwise, okay? Coming down, we take stutter step for more, more movement speed. 
Uh, we come here, we take concussive for the extra crit chance and also because we are knocking back with force arrow. And also we take trick attacks because we all we have manglers. So when you're knocking back and you're critting, and of course we crit a lot, we're knocking them down. So uh, more crowd control, easier to stay alive, those kind of things. Uh, we don't put a point into dash unless you don't have a shako. If you don't have a shako, of course, you put one point to dash and take it. If you have a shako, don't put any points at all into it. Just equip the skill because it just becomes free at that point. We take weapon mastery, which is okay because we are using a bow and not, not a crossbow. We're coming down here. We take smoke grenade all the way down to countering smoke grenade passive uh, this just reduces the cooldown of smoke grenade as long as you're hitting the target uh, while they're vulnerable uh, really nice to have smoke grenades this is very awesome and being able to disable elites and have them not cast as many skills and of course if they're not casting skills they're not killing you if they're not killing you that's a great thing also in this recent patch um, uh, they're allowing stuns and days to be able to work versus suppressor so you can just throw a smoke grenade at a suppressor elite and all of a sudden the suppressor bubble will go away so that makes it much easier to play range versus that particular elite fix because we now have a direct counter for it so not only do we you know that happens but when there are days with, or when they're affected with smoke grenade they take 25 percent increased damage from you so it's a really nice buff to have here we take dark shroud we come all the way down to sub to subverting dark shroud for the movement speed we take exploit just for more damage we take malice also for more da damage shadow imbuement obviously for the big aoe explosions and also mixed shadow imbuement for the extra uh 12 multiplicative damage when they are when they have shadow on them we take cold imbuement for the second imbuement and we come all the way down to mixed cold imbuement which gives you a, a massive multiplier whenever you're using cold imbuement and it's just really nice for cleaning up or just dealing with pesky single target damage you get a, a, a crazy amount of damage with uh code imbuement uh then we take frigid finesse to kind of piggyback off of of having this cold and chill from cold imbuement as well as from your pet we'll talk about that in a minute but frigid finesse very nice to have because it's going to almost always be up coming down here we, we take innervation uh, mainly just to get to alchemist fortune because we really want to increase our lucky hit chance this is going to help us with the umbras aspect keeping that up more often as well as the manglers uh, knocking them down keeping them dazed and then we come down take adrenaline rush just to get to haste this is just more movement speed more movement speed it just makes you more agile it's just way more fun and then a pettis uh, and pettis is actually up more often than you think because we're traveling quite a bit as you're moving around playing range at a distance so your first rotations uh you know with shadow imbuement usually kind of gets the impetus buff and it gives you just an, a nice solid burst of damage then we have precision which makes this all work uh, this season being able to play bow rogue this is the passive that is just or a key passive that is just nuts right now um and you just want to stack as much crit damage as you possibly can because that's where the synergy is so this key passive is the reason why we go crit damage on our gear and as well as on our paragon boards for the paragon board it is slightly different than the maxwell version here and the starter board we're going to have control in this slot here and we're going to come up to cunning strategy we're going to take that board next and we're going to slot the exploit glyph here uh, just to be able to get vulnerable uh rather quickly if you're leveling with this still like you're not like at 100 or you're like you know 75 80 kind of thing you actually want to have combat first this part is listed in the maxwell guide uh you want to have combat first because combat is very important it's crit damage so that scales with precision but later on you're going to want to put the combat in the last board for the most amount of uh, stat points you can get to really scale that up as high as you possibly can uh, so once you get to this board you do come back and you do swap out the glyphs there but that's mentioned there uh, but for now there is control in this slot there is exploit we do come up and we do take cunning stratagem this gives you two extra arrows i know that the tooltip says it only gives you one but it actually gives you two this is one of those blizzard you know don't trust the tooltip uh, from blizzard things uh something that's important to take here would be slayer for the extra armor because of course if you if you notice i don't have disobedience nor do i have 
juggernaut this is kind of the difference in the maxwell guide here than before and i do come up here and i take denial as well i don't bother with this no resilience because the maximum life is not as important but this is because of the fact that it gives you armor and it also gives you uh, all resist and of course this again no disobedience no juggernaut so coming down to eldritch bounty as our third board, we put Candy in here. Candy's really good. We come up, we take Eldris Bounty, uh, Legendary Node, because we're pretty much always imbued. We come all the way down to Tricks of the Trade. This is an important board because it has crit damage, so taking Havoc is very important to, ha uh, to do. And in this slot, we take Ranger because it has a lot of decks. And then we come over and we do take Ranger here. Generally speaking, you should almost always be distanced, so this should be just free. You know extra damage and then we come to our last board which is no witness and this is where we have combat so uh, generally speaking like i said combat would be on the first board if you're leveling if you're done and you're just wishing out builds you put combat on the last board here um, and the last thing too too that you would take is ruined why because it also has critical strike damage which like i said before uh synergizes with the precision key passes so make sure you take that route there and this is pretty much your paragon board for the build and finally the pet most of this is kind of standard the most important part of building this pet build will happen to be tempest and flash of adrenaline flash of adrenaline just gives you a basic damage bonus you want duration support and tactical support so therefore this you know this stays up a lot longer and you can cast it more often or sorry the construct casts it more often uh for you so these these two are important the third one can kind of be whatever you need uh generally speaking if you get the unique tuning stone genesis is a great uh place to kind of put this to kind of boost flash of adrenaline so uh this is kind of what you would want in game wise and again like i said third stone can kind of be whatever you kind of choose uh, for this until you can get genesis here uh then you got tempest here arcing support is very important for tempest this is going to allow for a lot of ticking to, to happen um quite often which is going to go really well with frigid support and frigid support in my opinion for rogue is probably the most important tuning stone you can have because this especially with the brand new patch that came out not too long ago uh this can actually freeze now so it's not just ticking and just chilling but with all the ticking that's happening that's fast with tempest you can it actually freezes them now so that's huge for survivability and also just huge for damage bonus from frigid finesse as well as cold imbuement uh so this is very 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 important to an extent to have and then i have uh safeguard support here just for some extra damage reduction uh, again, kind of a free slot. You can kind of do whatever you want here. If you have the Evernight unique tuning stone, this is where you would kind of put it. And you pretty much get a free Shaco for just having the unique tuning stone slotted here. So this is pretty much your pet, pretty straightforward. It's kind of really it. And that is the setup. You guys know me. I've been a loyalist to Bow Rogue since the beginning of Diablo 4. And this is pretty much my favorite setup to play currently right now and probably this setup i'm going to use going into the gauntlet hope you guys enjoy and as always till next time